Hi, my name is Ken, and this is Let's Code a MUD in C++11 Part 7. Uh, in the previous parts, uh, we uh, worked on our output logic, and in the last part, we, we pretty much wrapped that up. We gave ourselves uh, a couple useful uh, templated interfaces uh, for the rest of the program to be able to, to send any printable object to our connection class. And what we're going to start now is we're going to start on our connection input on getting uh, lines of Telnet text, lines of MUD text uh, from our Telnet clients. Um, and the uh, very first thing we're going to have to do to figure out how to do this is um, where are we going to put our input logic? So we can put it in this connection class along with all of the output logic, but it's actually going to end up being pretty distinct from the output logic. The only thing we really have in common is the need for the socket object. Um, and this gives us the opportunity to, to separate a uh, division of responsibilities. So to, to keep this class uh, clean with only the, the output logic and make a new class that has the input logic. Uh, and that'll make our, our program easier to read. Uh, so we're going to create a, an input uh, class for our connection. Um, but also in, in having separated that, this gives us another interesting opportunity, which is that we might have multiple input classes. In other words, uh, we might have a class that's desi designed to read uh, lines of text at a time, as in our MUD. Or we might have um, an input class that's designed to read um, HTTP requests, so we could have maybe a, a health check or a, a, a status or uptime uh, endpoint uh, for our MUD. Uh, and then we could have both of those kinds of connections handled as connections in our server class. Um, so we're going to write a new class. Uh, and in this case, uh, we, we are going to make a class for inputting MUD text. So this will be a line-oriented connection uh, that reads a line of text at a time. Uh, let's get all our boilerplate out of the way. So our include guard line-oriented connection define line-oriented connection. And if, let's get our namespaces in order. We're in the MUD program, and we're in the server component. And we're going to write a class. This is going to be class line oriented connection. All right. Uh, and already we have uh, another choice we have to make, which is uh, do we inherit or do we compose? Do we say this is going to inherit publicly from the connection class? Or are we going to say that we have a connection object inside of us. Um, and and this, this question, this distinction comes down to um, whether connection is an implementation detail for this class or whether it's actually part of this class that we want to expose to the outside world. So uh, this comes down to something that's called the Liskov substitutability principle, uh, which is that uh, inheritance uh, should represent an is a relationship. So A should inherit from B if A is a B. If anywhere the rest of our program sees line-oriented connection. We want them to also see connection um, equally, substitutably. Um, then we use inheritance. If it's just an implementation detail that the that only this class needs to see and the rest of the world doesn't need to see it, uh, then then we use composition. Uh, most of the time, we're going to want to err on the side of using composition because it's going to keep more things private. It's going to keep more division of responsibility. Uh, but in this class, in this case, actually. Um, I think inheritance is appropriate. Uh, we have a class that's going to do reading, for, but from the outside world's perspective, uh, a connection is a connection. A connection should read, write, and also handle closing when we get to that. Um, so uh, we're going to inherit from connection so that when the world sees a, a line-oriented connection, they have the ability to write to it. Um, it seems reasonable to me. Uh, so uh, first thing we're going to need to do is we need to write a constructor here. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of a pass-through constructor. What that means is um, I, I don't actually have any need for any uh, objects uh, for the line-oriented connection, but uh, in order to build the connection, I've got to we've got to pass that through. So let's um, send the I/O service on down. Oh, and this is a reference. Okay, that's a very simple constructor. Um, for reading, we're going to want uh, very similar to writing. We're going to want uh, an input buffer and an input stream. We're going to do a standard I stream here. We're going to take an input stream. Let's fix the spelling there. And then we've got to initialize input stream, much like we initialize output stream uh, from a buffer. Okay. Uh, so all is well so far. Uh, we're going to have, like we had write to socket, we're going to have a read line function. Uh, so we can read a line at a time. And what this is going to do 
is this function is going to read a line, it's going to handle that line, and then it's going to read the next line. So it's going to keep calling itself, and, and that's how, how we'll get the logic of the line-oriented connection. Uh, so let's, let's implement that before we move on. Uh, let's look at how ASIO does reading. Uh, so let's create a CPP file. Line-oriented connection.cpp. Uh, we're going to want to include line-oriented connection.hpp. Uh, we're going to want to using namespace uh, mud server, right? Line oriented connection read line. Okay, so how do we read a line? Uh, well, much like writing, uh, we're going to use one of the free uh, free functions. In this case, async read until uh, and how async read until differs from the other async read variants is that this is going to uh, return our handler, call our handler, uh, once it's encountered a specific uh, bit of text. Uh, in this case, that'll be the end of a line. Uh, so to use it, we're going to want uh, our socket, our input buffer, as usual, uh, but also the, the thing it's going to read until, so in this case, a new line. Uh, and then we're going to want our handler. Uh, before I write that handler, let's note that msocket is private in the connection class, so this actually isn't going to work. Uh, we could make msocket uh, protected, and in fact, I think we're going to do that later on. Uh, I have I have no problem with that whatsoever. Um, I, I don't mind making private variables protected because I sort of consider them related classes, uh, almost friends, um, uh, in that um, they, they have a need to share some data members. Uh, but in this case, we actually already have a method uh, that'll get us uh, the socket with, with zero overhead because it's it's written in line. Uh, so I have no reason not to just call socket. Um, okay, we need our error code, boost system error code, error. At size t, this will tell us the number of bytes that was read, uh, but we're not going to care about the exact number of bytes. We just want to make sure we got uh, a line, um, a line at a time. Uh, async read until is guaranteed uh, to call the handler with at least one line. Uh, and we'll read one line, and then if we call it again and it had a second line, then it'll just return back to us immediately without needing to read again. So we can just treat it as if uh, we, we get a line every time it calls the handler. Uh, but first, let's 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 check for errors, right? And if there's an error, we're going to want to uh, say so. We're going to say async read until encountered an error. And then otherwise, let's handle it. So let's let's get that line of text uh, by calling get line. We're going to pass it the input stream in this case, and then a reference to a line where it can store the text. Um, now at this point, uh, we need to do something with the line. We need to do some logic with the line. And, and in this case, we're going to be sending that to our MUD, uh, but we're going to put that in a separate interface class. We're going to say uh, interface dot handle line line because we want to have a nice clear division of responsibility between the parts of the program that are the server that are just sort of any kind of connection any kind of data uh, and our mud which is going to be very you know application specific it's going to be our, our multi-user dungeon and, and all the the contents of the text are going to have a specific meaning um, but uh, we don't want the server class to know what that meaning is uh, we want to keep keep them a nice a nice line between them a good a good fence so interface will actually be part of a new component uh, our mud logic uh, and it won't be part of the server component uh, but we're not going to do that in this episode so let's just comment that out and then the last thing we're going to want to do after everything's completed successfully is we're going to want to go back and read another line okay uh, so so far so good here um, let's see have we overlooked anything will this will this compile it looks like this ought to compile actually we have overlooked one thing um, which is that how does this, this read line get kicked off? Uh, once we read one line, we'll keep reading a line over and over and over again. Um, but how do we read that first line? Uh, you'd be tempted to say, well, we'll just do that in the constructor here. Once we create a new connection, let's read the line. Um, but if we go look at our server program, remember, we can't do that. We can't do that because we're constructing the object a little ahead of time. We're constructing it before we've actually opened the connection for reading and writing. Uh, so if, if we try to call async read back here, uh, we're, we're actually going to get an error right away and, 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 and we're going to have to give up. Um, so what we're going to have to do in this case is we're going to have to move our start function. Uh, we, we're going to have to 
have the start function actually call the line oriented connection uh, to tell it that it's ready to get going. And I don't like this, and we're going to address this uh, shortly. Um, but for now, just just to get things working, let's let's put this over here. Let's say start read line. Um, and then also for debugging purposes, I want to be able to see what we're reading. So let's let's um, just temporarily say um, received line line. Dell. Okay. Um, obviously, that's going to be a lot of debugging. We don't want to pipe every line everyone writes uh, to the console always. Uh, but for now, just to demonstrate, and let's let's check that this compiles. Uh, finished. Finished already. Oh, we we <laughs> we missed one small thing, which is our CMake list. Uh, we have to add the CPP in here, so <laughs> we actually get that. Uh, um, functionality line oriented connection uh, and there's also actually another thing which is that we're not constructing line oriented connections yet we're constructing connections so let's put that in here line oriented connection um, and that should be good to go now uh, not declared okay let's uh, modify or include here and let's also not forget we probably need to include connection here uh, and while we're on an include spree, let's uh, let's go to our CPP. We need to include IO stream. Uh, okay. So let's see. Did we catch everything? Uh, almost. What what happened here? Oh, I misspelled IO service. That's that's no big deal. All right, it built. All right, so let's run it, and let's tell net to it, uh, and let's type a line of text. Received line hello. That's perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Uh, so reading works. Reading, getting text from the remote end of the connection works. Um, very happy with that. Um, oh, but because uh, we didn't implement shutdown for the reading class yet, we'll, we'll have to do that in a future episode. Uh, let me just, yeah, force quit that. Um, so what did we do in this part? We, we created our line-oriented connection. Uh, we moved the start function into here. Oh, actually, we didn't fully move it. We just created a new one to, to replace the old one, to supersede it. Um, this one's not being called. Uh, this is super confusing, by the way. I don't like doing this. Having having a function with one name in in a in a class, and then derive from that class and re write a new function with that name. You now have two functions, but one's obscured by the second one. Don't do that, please. Don't do that. Just if you're going to move a function, just get rid of the old one, <laughs> um, or or use uh, polymorphism. Use virtual functions to indicate that it actually depends on which kind of object you have, um, and we'll we'll get into that in a future episode. Uh, but okay, so what did we do here? We created a class for reading that when it starts up, it, it reads a line and then read line is going to keep uh, calling itself over and over again. We're going to keep reading lines. Um, and if we go to line oriented connection .cpp, um, it's going to try to do an async read until. And if that returns successfully, we'll get a line out of the stream. Very simple. All right. Um, so, uh, at this point, I think we're going to stop here. Uh, we've got a class that does reading, that does connection input. And in the next class, uh, or in the next part, we're going to actually talk about our values again. Because um, this, this start function nonsense, I, I really don't like. It, it sort of uh, violates a, a C++ principle that I want to talk about in the next episode. Uh, so we'll revisit our values in the next part. Uh, until then, my name is Ken, and this was Let's Code a MUD in C++11, Part 7. Thank you.